Lake City, the heart of Utah, famous for its fresh air, clean living, and natural beauty. But appearances can be deceptive. Lurking in the shadows, a team of mad game developers are working on a plan so terrifying it will send people running for cover. The name of this top secret project is War of the Monsters. Follow us as we uncover the story behind what is poised to be Earth's greatest battle. The basic premise is that um, aliens from outer space are invading Earth, and the governments of the planet unite and create this super weapon to help defeat them, and they do so. But a side effect is the UFOs come crashing back down to Earth, and they spill their radioactive mutagen all over the planet, and then these huge monsters are born, and they just kind of morph out of huge insects or other crazy creatures. Now we've established how the beasts were created, it's time to unlock the inner workings of the monsters. Of the eight monsters that you get to play initially, we have Praetor, the crazy mantis. She has lightning fast attacks, and she's really good at close combat, but she's also good at catching and throwing also. We have Kongar, our huge mutant chimp. He's a really well-balanced character. Another really well-balanced character in the game would be Robo-47. He's our classic, vintage, kind of atomic age U.S. robot, kind of clunky and over the top. He can shoot out a nuclear missile and do great devastation to the level. We've got Agamo, our reanimated sentinel. He's a statue from a kind of a Polynesian island. We have Magmo. He's kind of the elemental arch nemesis of Agamo. He's kind of a four-armed, fiery creature. He's a very heavy hitter like Agamo is. We've got Ultra 5, kind of our Japanese, almost toy-like robot. Who else? Oh, Kineticlops. He's our classic sci-fi monster that you may have seen from um, old movies. And he's very inspired from kind of vintage and classic sci-fi. He's just a, a just pure energy, coursing electricity all over. And he has this huge eyeball that kind of floats in this plasma in the center of his body. The biggest challenge for War of the Monsters was trying to get the design of the monsters just right. We have stacks and stacks of concept art for each monster. For example, Agamo, who's the, the, the big stone idol, he started off as kind of a pile of rocks with legs, and we kept going round and round in circles, and, and it took forever just trying things. As chaos reigns and the monsters rampage, the very environments become weapons in the right player's hands. There's actually two types of environmental attacks that are going on in the game. One is crucial to gameplay, which is actually using objects and the buildings and uh, just basically the geometry of the level to, um, to really enhance fighting. Uh, you can pick up a car, a bus, a train, whatever, and use that as a weapon. On top of that, we have natural disasters that monsters can play off of. We think that that kind of fits into the whole theme, because when you see two monsters fighting in an old 50s movie, they're not just up there wrestling like men in tights. They're going across towns, across valleys, throwing boulders at each other, creating natural disasters. So we have stuff like tidal waves, earthquakes, nuclear reactor ventings, etc., that, that really can actually change how the dynamics of fighting happen as the level degrades. One of the core elements to War of the Monsters is the mixture of long-range and short-range gameplay. And very early on, we found that traditional camera techniques currently employed in the video game industry really weren't going to cut it. So we spent a significant amount of time researching and developing various camera models. And the one that we really like the most is our camera unification technology. So for example, in two-player gameplay, we support a split-screen mode, one player on one side and one player on the other. And that camera follows them around, and that allows them to jump and climb and fly and do all of their free-roaming combat, grabbing cars and throwing them at their opponents. But when they get close together into a hand-to-hand -to -hand combat situation, the system detects that, and we cross-dissolve from the two split screens into one more traditional fighting view. That allows the players to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, see their movements, engage their distances, jump from building to building in these really cool monster battles. One guy might hit another one and BAM! Send him flying across the level. And the system detects that, whoosh, and then it splits back into two screens. And that really allows the hybrid gameplay in War of the Monsters to really come through in single-player and in two-player. Like every other aspect of the game, the soundtrack featured in War of the Monsters 
was carefully considered. The music was inspired by old movie music, but we didn't want to just recreate that music. We wanted to uh, use it as a jumping off point. So we tried to capture all of that energy and, and power and um, awe and mystery from, from the big monster movies and the old sci-fi movies, and then kind of bring it up to date, uh, make it fit a modern game. The music is also uh, dynamic and interactive. So the intensity of the music varies based on what you're doing in the game and what you're seeing on the screen. All of the levels in War of the Monsters have an insane amount of player interaction. Not only are they completely destructible, which is fun in its own right, but many of the levels have kind of hidden attacks that you can use against your opponents. For example, in the Club Caldera level, if you dive attack on some of the little uh, volcano nubs that are out in the level, it causes the main volcano to shoot flaming magma rocks out at your opponents. It does pretty good damage. Uh, in, the, in the level uh, Atomic Island, the player can dive attack this kind of radioactive button and fill the middle of the level full of this oozy, nasty radioactive goo. And you can throw opponents in it and cook them like bacon. It does good damage. It's really exciting. With a classic 50s movie atmosphere, monsters as big as skyscrapers and environments which range from crumbling cities to raging volcanoes, War of the Monsters is unlike any other fighting game. Prepare to fight the battle of your life. War of the Monsters.